Hey guys, this is Brian Mouts with Turf Mechanic. Today I'm going to be running one of my dethatchers over the over my ground uh, to prepare it for the fall season. Now, you don't have to do this at the end of the summer. You can do it in the middle of the fall or the middle of the spring. I wouldn't recommend cool season lawn owners do this in the early to middle part of the summer, but warm season grass types could probably do that at that point as well. All of that's beside the point. I want to give you the ninja tips, the things that I know through experience using my electric dethatchers on getting the job done better. There are plenty of tutorials out there and a lot of demonstrations on how to use these machines, but there's a good number of things that I have found along the way that nobody really talks about. And those are the things I wanna share with you today. These things are like using vacuum cleaners. It's not like you're gonna use it and just think, whoa, how on earth do I use an electric dethatcher on my lawn? You literally just like plug it in and turn it and just go back and forth across the lawn. There's nothing special about that. But what people don't tell you is that going up along the edges of things are particularly difficult. Just because you have an electric dethatcher or scarifier or power rake, whatever you wanna call the thing, doesn't mean you don't need a manual thatch rake. Because of the nature of these things, you've got a wheel and then you got this little space and then you finally have your first like tine. And that means you got about four inches of space that are never being scratched by whatever tine you have installed in your machine. So if you're going up along the edge of a sidewalk, the first four inches or so are never going to get hit. If you have stepping stones in your lawn or some other sort of, I don't know, some other thing in the lawn, you can't go over the top of it. You might be able to go over the top of some things if you've got the flexible tines, but if you're using the scarifier blade, those are hard tine, uh, those are hard tine blades. Uh, you wouldn't want to go over a stone or a stepping stone or something fragile with a hard tine because you're going to break it or you're going to break the blade itself. If you do decide to buy a, an electric dethatcher, which I'm not telling you to do, but if you decide to buy one, you really need the manual thatch rake in addition to go along into those weird nooks and crannies around your lawn that the electric machine can't get to. Now, I also find that a lot of tutorials online show that you just go up and then you turn and you go this way and then you turn and you go that way and you just kind of go back and forth. I started using my machines like that because that's what everyone does. But over the course of the years using these, these machines, I found that it's significant, they, they work significantly better when you're pulling them backwards. It's not something that you're gonna find in manuals, like user manuals. And I don't know if I've ever seen this referenced in any tutorial online. But when I'm using the machine, if I go forward, those tines are pulling this way. But if I'm pushing the machine this way, then I'm actually uh, releasing pressure on those tines as I move forward. But if I'm pulling the machine backwards and it's clawing in this circular sort of motion, it actually ends up pulling more material out of the ground, regardless of the height setting. Now, Another common misconception is that you have to put these things on the lowest setting possible to get any use out of them. Now online for, I don't know, creators like myself um, or internet personalities, uh, it looks more impressive to set that thing on the lowest setting possible and dig a ton of material out of the ground and have this gigantic pile sitting there and say, look at all this stuff I pull out of my lawn. I actually don't care about that. That is literally just for show. I don't want this machine to pull that much stuff out of the ground. So what I do to combat that is I actually cut my lawn with my lawnmower using a bagger on the lower setting, a little bit lower than I normally cut it. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom, but if you cut your lawn a little bit lower and bag all those clippings, then that means you have less grass that the machine is trying to cut through. You're bagging a lot of the material. And then when it comes time to use that machine, the claws, whatever tine you're using, a hard tine or a flexible tine, are going through less material, which means it's going to be pulling up the good grass less so all of that is not going to get mounted up into that pile of impressive thatch or surface debris that these machines pull up. And then I also recommend that you start on the highest setting. So instead of like clawing deep into the ground, start clawing lightly into the, fo into the uh, foliar canopy. 
don't scratch the ground or try to score into it. Uh, you're going to be inflicting an enormous amount of damage on your lawn, which is fine. It will recover. Um, but if you're digging deep, it will inflict an enormous amount of damage onto your lawn, which you're going to have to plan to recover from. Now, not everyone really enjoys applying fertilizer to the lawn or putting extra water onto the lawn. But if you're inflicting an enormous amount of damage, like scoring into the surface of your dirt, cutting rhizomes and stolons, ripping good grass out of the ground because you're trying to dig as deep as possible, then that lawn is going to suffer for at least a couple weeks, even in the scenario that you give it excess water and fertilizer. If you're digging lightly into the ground on the higher setting on these machines, then those tines are still going to be pulling out a pretty good amount of surface debris, and you're not actually going to be damaging the lawn very much. Basically, you'll be able to use these machines a few times every year instead of like once every couple years, and your lawn is really going to perform very well over the long run. Now, similar to using the dethatching rake, like a manual long-handed tool, I recommend doing chunks of the lawn at a time. Bigger chunks, usually kind of in that 500 to 1,000 square feet uh, portion size. Uh, if you do chunks, of that size all at once, then it's very easy to trim the lawn down low, figure out what to do with the clippings, then run the, uh, the dethatcher. Of course, you're gonna go in multiple directions because sometimes the grass wants to go that way and sometimes the grass wants to go that way uh, naturally because of the topography of your lawn. So depending on the direction that you're running, you're gonna be picking up uh, the surface debris better in certain directions. Also, if you don't have a perfectly flat lawn, if you have like dips and uh, humps in your lawn, going in different directions will help get those dips and humps better or more uniformly. But after you run the dethatcher in all the, the different directions, you can then go and take your lawnmower and run back over it with the bagger and suck up all of those clippings that are on the ground and plus all of the grass blades that used to be laying down that are now standing up because of the dethatcher, they will now be cut for the first time in a while. You're actually gonna end up having a thinner, more healthy lawn. And by thin, I'm not talking about like you're just like killing grass and now you can see all of the dirt. Uh, you've thinned it out. It's like pruning a bush. It performs better over time with airflow coming through. That's what we want with the turf canopy of our lawn. After we run that thing, we then have the opportunity of putting down fertilizer and water and it's more, it's more apt to go into the soil and benefit our lawn in a more efficient manner. And because we've exposed a lot of extra dirt that wasn't exposed before, these are the perfect times, this is the best time to put seed down. So you, this is why it's usually done towards the end of the summer, the first part of fall, because that's the uh, overseeding time of the year for many lawns across America. If you do plan on putting seed down after this process, that's when you kind of have to decide which machine you want to use. Uh, the, the machines, like the one here on the left, the Greenworks, uh, this only has a flexible tine. Uh, the Sunjo on the right, and many other brands. Sunjo is not the only one. Uh, there are other brands out there that have uh, interchangeable tines on the bottom that you could put a hard tine on. The hard tine is going to dig straight into the ground. It's not going to flex, uh, so it's going to leave more grooves in the ground. Uh, grooves that grass seed are going to fall into and, and they will germinate better in those grooves. That's why we, we call those scarifiers. They actually cut little grooves into the ground. And in very professional settings, we're gonna call those slit seeders because they cut slits into the ground and then the seeds go directly into the slits. This is kind of a poor man's version of that, a, uh, a layman's or a residential version. Both of these machines that you see here are uh, plug-in electric. In recent years, there's been a couple, a uh, handful of battery powered um, dethatchers that have hit the market. I haven't exper experimented with any of those quite yet, but if you do have a little bit of extra money, then those are most likely way easier to use because you don't have to wrangle a cord. In the coming years, I'm probably going to be experimenting a lot more with the battery dethatchers because it's better to use the dethatcher on a light dethatching setting more often than it is to do a uh, corded dethatcher heavy digging into the ground less frequently. It's just better to do it more regularly 
lightly. So anyway, here on the lawn, I'm doing that. Right after I do that, I'm gonna be watering and fertilizing. Fertilizing isn't that big of a deal, but I do like to push the recovery as fast as I possibly can because I want my lawn to look and perform and be as healthy as it possibly can for the entirety of the fall season. I don't wanna be trying to recover for a month and a half and then have cold weather hit and the whole lawn shuts down. But that's a personal opinion and that's a personal preference. These machines do cost a bit. They speed the process up significantly over using a manual dethatching rake. However, you can actually dethatch or remove the surface debris better by using a manual thatching rake. It takes a lot more mu muscle, it takes a lot more energy, and it takes a lot more time, but you can actually get more material out doing it manually. So if you're not interested in spending extra amounts of money on this, or you wanna learn how to do things better, even though they're a little bit harder, then make sure to watch this video up here, which is all about using the manual dethatching rake. And even if you do use these things, you need to use that manual dethatching rake anyway around certain areas of your property. There's a lot of information in that video that I think you're gonna find extremely helpful.